Welcome to ARVP, the University of Alberta's premier autonomous vehicle student group for the last 25 years. Since 2012, ARVP has focused on AUV and the robo self competition. This year, we'll be taking our older robot, Ori, which has been optimized with new substances, overhauled controls, and improved wiring. But before all that, let me introduce myself. My name is Jenny, I am a fifth year engineering student, but most importantly, I am this year's project lead. This year, we'll go over how we've upgraded Ori's mechanical, electrical, and software system with the help of our, some, some of our members. Then, we'll take you through our competition strategy and the tasks we plan to do during the 2022 RoboSub competition. Oh, hey, my name is Stevie. I'm one of the mechanical co-leads this year. Let me take you through what makes up Ori. Ori's frame design was inspired by the TIE Fighters from Star Wars. Yeah, we're that nerdy. The wings on either side, constructed of six aluminum ribs and sheet metal, provide protection during transportation and testing. There are multiple trays and aluminum angles bolted to the ribs to mount every set system. The dropper system and associated fisheye camera are mounted on the underside of the frame. The 3D printed and hydrodynamically tested markers are top loaded and held in by caps. The bottoms are held in by a 3D printed gate, which is attached to an IP67 rated servo motor. As the servo rotates, the gate allows one of the markers to drop. The torpedo's assembly was redesigned this year to be safer than our previous compressed gas and solenoid system. The mechanism consists of two spring-powered torpedoes, a custom 3D printed housing, and spring-assisted levers. Each lever has hooks to load the torpedoes. When the servo rotates, the spring at the back of the lever is compressed and the hooks are released to fire the torpedo. Mounted to Ori's underside is a sonar system which includes three hydrophone sensors for detection and triangulation of the underwater pinger based on its frequency. The hull consists of an octagonal shaped aluminum central section and a cylindrical acrylic tube on each side. The central section supports the sliding electrical trays for ease of access. The flat surfaces provided by the octagonal shape allow for subcon connectors, cable penetrators, and carrier boards. Hey, I'm Nazmon, an electrical team member and designer. Speaking of our carrier boards, this year we have focused on quality of life improvements for Ori while preparing boards for a new design in upcoming years. This year we updated our power conversion to a modular method. From one carrier board, we can split into up to three converter boards attached to separate power rails. So the output voltage running through Ori is determined by, the, by just the two resistors on each converter board. Thus, by changing converter boards, we can modify the percentage of power to some parts of our ECD. We, we have also finally brought on board a working sonar system. On Audi, there are three hydrophones that pick up noise and frequency of competition finger, utilizing a board consisting of amplification and filtering circuits. We are now able to pre-process and intercept finger signals to measure distance. Hey, I'm Justin. I'm ARVP's resident software team lead and outdoors enthusiast. My objective this year has been to keep the boat afloat, as I like to say, um, with nearly a brand new software team developing over the last two years. We focus heavily on education and streamlining our existing programs. We switched to keeping all active software in Docker containers so that new members can avoid dual booting a specific version of Ubuntu. This has reduced our onboarding time and made running the software stack even easier. We also purchased licenses for the Ross Trading website, The Construct Sim, to further focus on specializing each member's educations. This will also allow us to gain the skills necessary to learn Ross 2 and upgrade our robot to Ross 2 next year. At the competition, we'll be mainly iterating off the software stack from 2019 RoboSub competition. Notably, we've improved our LQR controller and parameters for increased accuracy and speed. Our visual PID servos have also received an overhaul to, to nail the torpedo tasks and we plan with the save time to complete the surface task. Now that you've been introduced to Ori and some of our team, here's our game plan for the 2022 RoboSoft competition. We'll begin the competition either facing perpendicularly or away from the gate. Decided by a coin flip, Ori should easily identify the gate after diving and some searching and recognize the two photos on the gate. 
Passing through the gate, especially the G-Man side, has been no difficulty of ours as seen in this footage. Although we do not perform any rolls from our simulation, we should be capable of performing 6 to 8 90 degrees rotations about the z-axis for maximum stop points. Using our upgraded vision algorithm from years past, Ori will then closely follow the orange path markers to the booties. Thanks to our improved LQR controller, we should confidently touch only the right buoy for our side. Using our vision system, Ori will identify the location of the collecting bins and move over top of them. Our dropper system, which was designed last year, will then release torpedo-style markers into the appropriate bins. Then we'll move to a torpedo shootout. We have been perfecting our torpedo technology for years, but there is significant variability and uncertainty related to this task. In 2017, we narrowly missed it. Given how close we were and our new enclosure, center design, and stereo camera, we're confident Ori will hit the target this year. With our finalized sonar system, Ori will move towards the final challenge, the octagon. The goal is to surface properly in the octagon, ending our run. And that concludes our RoboSup 2022 plan of action. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to see you all in person.